guys, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Silver after a week, and holy crap, like, what an adventure to try and get to start in this video. As, as you can see in Goldenrod City, there are loads of rockets around now, so you're, like, blocked off from visiting lots of parts of the city. No, I don't care. Um... Like, what an adventure to try and get to the start of the video. Like, first of all, I wanted to get a glass of water, so I got my glass of water and I put four ice cubes into it because the weather today is just oppressive. It is hot, right? But it is also extremely still. There is not one tiny bit of wind there. I'm looking outside right now and the leaves aren't moving. They're still. There is no wind whatsoever. Take over the radio tower, what? It's none of your business. Would you gazing at the- he looks like he's taking a whiz there. So this is the radio tower. What do you want, you be- oh, you're pissing all over me, man. Um... So now our nice, um, radio tower music is replaced with the kooky rocket music, which is fun, by the way. Hello! I'm sorry, but we're, we're not ever any tours today! Um, okay, so basically, it is so still. There is no wind out there whatsoever. Um, and that weather just pisses me off because because we live in the south of the country It's always really flippin' humid because we're right by the sea and we're right in the pat like we're in the warmest part of the country And because we're in the sea, it's always bloody wet because we're on the southwest coast So we're right on like the well, not on the coast. We're like near the coast. We're in the southwest part of the country So it's always bloody humid here when it's hot Unless there's wind, and today there's no wind, so I'm going insane because of this weather. It's just one of those days where you stay inside, because if you go outside, you'll be even worse than if you stay inside, do you know? Um, and it doesn't help that I'm up in this room, because this room is probably the hottest room in the house. Like, this room, where I am at the moment, it basically has two windows, and one of them faces, and like, between, and both of them face, um... One of them faces due east, and it's actually a ceiling window, right? And the other one faces kind of northeast, um, faces northeast, and that's on the wall. So basically, in the morning, this room gets all the sunshine you could possibly want, and all through the afternoon as well because of the ceiling window. So it gets it from the very start of the morning all the way through the afternoon, and it's just like, it's roasting. Um, it's just a really warm room, especially in this kind of weather. Um, so I'm looking forward to, I'm actually going to be moving down to another room in the house. Which is like the complete opposite, it's like on the ground floor. And it has, um... It's on, you have to do that, don't you? I mean, you're gonna die, just deal with it. It's on the ground floor, stone walls, no insulation, thank you. Um, a chimney from an old fireplace, so all the drafts I can I can want. Old floorboards on the floor, more drafts for me. And it doesn't face the sun at all. Like that room, it has one window and it hardly gets any sun whatsoever. It is the coolest just room in the world. I love it. It's like living in like a tiny little fridge or something. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so... That was like the start of it. First of all, the weather is oppressive, and I had to get my glass of water with four ice cubes. Then I then then I came up here, and there was a blue bottle in the room, and those things are the most annoying things. So I had to wait for him to leave the room. Um. So oh hi Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff. Aren't you going to sing for me? Jigglypuff. 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 Um, so yeah, oh look at this, reds are here. Um, so, like, that that happened. And then into the bargain, okay, he leveled up, let's send out Debra! Um, the, so the blue bottle was in here, I had to wait for him to leave out through the window, so I basically had to open the window wide and wait for him to take the hint. Right? So then I sat down, and I turned on the game, right? And I started up Pokemon Silver. Then I needed to go to the bathroom, and I was like, fuck, I know I'm going to have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the of the thing, so I better go do it now, do you know, as opposed to having to need to go to the bathroom in the middle of a video. 
So this is like the next part of my my um my adventure is me going me having me leaving the game on and going to the bathroom. So I'm sitting on the toilet, right? I'm wait, like I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm expecting a phone call today, right? And wouldn't you know, while I'm sitting on the toilet, I hear my phone ringing, and it's an important phone call, so I have to go and get it. So thankfully. Uh, if you if you like, can pardon my using a metaphor, actually you'll probably relish, you'll probably um, appreciate my using a met metaphor. Uh, thankfully, the wheels hadn't been set in motion yet, so I was just able to get off the toilet and go and answer the phone without any collateral damage, you know. Um, thankfully I have all these Paralyze Cure Berries from Mystery Gift. Um, so, uh, thankfully, I was able to just get off the toilet and answer the phone and deal with the phone call, right? And then I had to go back into the bathroom and f and go to the toilet still. So I did that, right? And then I come back and... No, no, first of all, when I went into the bathroom the first time, there was another blue bottle in there. So I was like, oh, fuck you. So I killed that one, right? So then I went to the toilet and answered the phone call and went to the toilet again. And then I come in here and, like, I sit down and my ice cubes have melted. But that's a good thing, because when the ice cubes have melted, that's when the, 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 the water is really cold. So that's a good thing. At least that's, um, one consolation. So I've spent the sick first seven minutes of this video... <sighs> I spent the first seven minutes of this video just talking to you all about my adventure. The adventure that it took to get to this stage, you know? But yeah, basically I'm moving to the room downstairs, which I don't know. Like, I mean, I, it was it was fun. I'll, I'll use, I'll, let's see how much Rock Smash does. It'd be funny if it killed it. Because that's such a wimpy attack. Oh my god, you saw. That's just, De that's like Deborah's high attack. Plus, um same type attack bonus, plus black belt, plus it being super effective, means I can kill these things with rock smash. Just like, um, uh, so yeah, I'm moving to the room downstairs, which I don't know, like when this, this part, this part that my room is in at the moment, I like my room, like I'm after getting really accustomed to it, I've been here in this room for about five to six years now, yeah, six years I've been here, almost. Yeah, it'll be six years this summer. Cause I remember I was doing my junior cert exams when um when the, this part of the house was being built, the new part. Um, and I like it here. I'm used to it here. I've grown. I really loved my time in this room. But I think it's time to like. I I need a change to that kind of way. And seeing as I'm not going to be moving out for some time yet, even though I'd like to, there's just no work anywhere. And I'll be in college again next year anyway. So um. Like, I'll be here for the time being, so I'm going to be in that room downstairs for quite some time as it is. It's just going to be nice, you know? That room downstairs used to be our old sitting room. Um, and I have lots of memories from that place, I'll tell you. But, um... Speaking of junior cert exams, the phone call that I was waiting to get was in relation to, like, um, me scribing and reading for, um, exams. Because that's what I'm doing this summer, is I, I've got quite a few, a lot of work for, um scribing um just for people who need someone to write for them be whether they because they have a learning disability or because they've broken their hand or their wrist or something before the exams so that's what i'm doing is i'm scribing for exams um and reading as well for people who maybe have dyslexia or some any of those things you're entitled by to to like the stage will provide you with um hey hey who are you crusty the clown like hey hey keep out of our way um the state will provide you with a scribe or a reader based on your needs, you know. So I'm I'm doing that basically, um, and I've got quite a few. I've actually have like seven exams that I'm down for doing at the moment, which is really good. Um, oh, don't you be doing that? Just make this battle last longer. Um, come on, Furby. So like I'm doing that, and that was what that phone call was about. Was I? Like, they want me to do another one or whatever. So that's good work if you can get it, you know? Oof, stop flinching and confusing me. Do I really have to switch out to your big brother Blackula? Do you know? Oh, good. Thank you, Furby. I love Venonat. Do you remember Tracy had a Venonat in the cartoon and it could see like 10 miles away or something like that? Where it could like see... Yeah, it could like see like 10 miles away because I remember when they were trying to find... um something. They were like using Venonat Super Sonic to try and find it or something. Oh for god's sake, I can't believe this Zubat is after whittling down my health. Come on, Pooper. 
I'm not going switching out to Audrey 2. Audrey 2 is already like level 28. These guys need to catch up. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad. I'm actually at the right kind of level for this place, you know? Because the Pokemon here are all level like 26, 7, 8, and I'm level 26 or so, so. I'm at the right level. What is this going to be? Another zoo bat. Well, let's just let Pooper take care of this guy as well. Um, so yeah, today is Friday, the 1st of June. Went out yesterday and vote. Yesterday I did two interesting things. I went out and voted in the referendum that was going on. Because we were having a referendum for the fiscal compact or whatever. Or the stability treaty, as certain people like to call it. Which I think is biased in, one, in favor of one side of the referendum, you know? So I don't agree with calling it the stability treaty. Um, so I went out and voted in that. And they're counting it at the moment, and we sh it lo it's looking like the, the, the change is going to pass through by um, about 6 to 4, like 60-40 is what it's looking like, which, I don't know, see, that, that was the weirdest referendum, loads of people, the turnout was actually quite low, it was under 50%, um, which usually referenda get like, some like sometimes they get like about 60% turnout, which is quite good, um, but uh, so, I don't know, I'd say a lot of people just didn't vote because they didn't know which way to go, because it wasn't really the kind of issue that has a straight, clear-cut answer. Not that any issue has a straight, clear-cut answer, but like in previous referendums, so for example, in the referendum on abortion, um, then, like, you're either yes or you're no, do you know? Or in the referendum on legalizing divorce that they had a couple of years, like, a couple of... But yeah, like, divorce wasn't legalized here until, what was it, like, the late 80s, which was, like, you couldn't get a divorce here until then. So, yeah, in that referendum, it was either yes or no. Um, uh, so, but whereas this, this is about, like, the economy. This referendum is about um, whether a treaty, like, should be should be ratified. It's basically the EU wants to ratify a treaty. But because we have a constitution, we are entitled to the right to a referendum to see whether our people want this treaty ratified or not, which is a good thing, because in other countries in the EU, they're just, it, like, things are able to be ratified just based on um, the decisions of politicians alone, but thankfully here we have a constitution, so we're entitled to, um, like, our people are entitled to our sage, and that kind of way. Um, so that's what it was about. It's about a treaty that's based, that basically introducing rules for the, um, for how countries run their economies and stuff like that so people like on the basically it means that the most important point is that it means that in law in european law and in our constitution it would say that ireland um legally has to have a balanced budget every year like has to have a balance is committed to a balanced budget which technically like in my opinion that's a good thing because having a balanced budget is a good thing it's the best possible thing you can do like in the in the 20s here with the like the Commonwealth government um, we had they were committed to a balanced budget and even though times were crap they never ran up international debt because they were committed to a balanced budget now they had to make some tough decisions and they Really, like, peop like life wasn't that great for people here, but in fairness, like, we were just after becoming a semi-independent state, um, and I think Commonwealth did a good job, you know, and keeping a balanced budget is one of the most difficult things you can do, particularly when you're a new country, like we were back then, um, so, uh, like, in fairness, I, I like, but, but, so, te te I, in my opinion, it's a good thing to, to have that is the coolest mock sprite I have ever seen. That is just the best one ever. Yeah, this is going. This isn't a flyer here using confusion on him because he's a special wall. We'll have to bring out Poopa and get the mud slaps going. Cause Pooper's got the slaps. Um. So, like, te in my opinion, a balance committing to a balanced budget is a good thing. On the other hand, I don't believe that setting it in stone in the laws of our constitution and having it be subservient to the EU is a good thing. I think that's a bad thing, and that's why I voted no yesterday. That's why I'm, that, I'm telling you I voted no. Like, I voted no yesterday because of that, because even though I agree with it being a balanced budget, 
referendum, a referendum isn't about whether you agree with something or not. It's about whether you agree that something would be put into writing in the constitution that governs the running of your state or not. So that's why I voted no, because I, I don't agree with it on those grounds, that I don't agree that that should be, that, that, that you should place that kind of, that, that kind of legislation in the very, um, the very fiber of our state's govern of the governing of our state, or you know, that kind of way. So that's why I voted no. So that I did that yesterday. I went out and cast my vote. We won't let you ruin our plans for our comeback. Our combat, your comeback special. We still have that move. No, not on you. You're fine. I'm not going to be using you in the next battle. I can't wait for Furby to evolve. It's going to be so kick-ass having a bloody Venomot. I had a Venomot on my Pokemon Pearl team, as far as I remember. Not that I ever played it that much, because I have Platinum, and I think Platinum is superior. But, um... That music is so cool. The other thing I did yesterday was I watched an opera, and it was very good, and I really enjoyed it, because it was a really interesting one. It's terrible how Team Rocket is trying to control Pokemon. Yeah, the opera I watched was um, Capriccio by uh, Richard Strauss, which is a really interesting opera. It was written in the f by him in the 40s. I'm to crush anyone who challenges Team Rocket. Um, it was written by him in the 40s. 1942, I think, it was when it was premiered, I think. Um, and basically, it's... Basically, it's about... Now, I don't know whether Surf is going to do more damage or mods, though. Um, basically... It's an opera about... it, Like... In the, the most glib and banal way of putting... Oh, fuck you. You had, like, two HP left. The most bit Oh, go pooper! <laughs> fuck yeah. The most glib and banal way of putting it is that, um... It's an opera about opera. Basically, it starts off as there's a countess. We might as well use that moo moo milk. Look at all those M's. Moo moo moo. Um, it starts off as there's a countess and two men are vying for her affections. And one of them is a composer and one of them is a poet, as in like a person who writes the libretto for an opera or whatever. So they're in they're at the, in the process of writing an opera or whatever, and they're both vying for her affections and arguing about which is more important, the music or the words. Whether and turns into and there's also an impresario who's from the side of that the theatrics and the spectacle are the most important ingredient. Do you know that kind of way? And basically, the whole opera takes place in this room on one day. Where there's basically they, there's just this whole discourse and discussion on um, the whole concept of opera and the and theater and and the relationship between words and music and whether one can really whether in in the case of a good opera one truly can exist without the other or one is more or less important than the other. Um, it's just it's a really interesting work and it's thoroughly enjoyable. And there's some brilliant music in it, and se and also it is really funny as well. I love it. Um, it's just a really fascinating and brilliant work. So it's called Capriccio. It's not too long. It's only about two and a half hours long, and it's really well worth a watch. The, the production I saw yesterday was actually the. It was on television. It was the production. Um, it was the New York Mets, um, the New York Metropolitan Opera production from last year. So it was originally um, would have been on on in April 2011. Um, so it, that's the one that I was watching. I didn't know whether it would be on the internet or anything, but it was really good. And Renee Fleming was playing the Countess, um, which I saw her. It was Renee Fleming was in. The production of Rota Linda that I saw last year, as in just before Christmas, and that was the New York Metropolitan Opera as well. Because what the New York Metropolitan Opera does, and it is fantabulous that they do. Fanta what? What do you mean what? Oh, I said something was evolving. Do you know the way it goes? What? Such and such is evolving. I was like, who the fuck's evolving? No one leveled up. <laughs> so um, what the New York? <laughs> fantabulous. What kind of? <laughs> That's such a stupid word. I think it's fantabulous that they do this. Um, the New York Met, what they do is they broadcast live 
opera streamings to cinemas. So there's a cinema here in Cork, it's Mahan Point in Mahan, and um, like the cinema there, the New York Met broadcasts opera live to there. Now, on the one hand, opera is never as spectacular when you're not in a theatre setting because the physical presence has a lot to do with it, and because you're in the cinema, you don't have what 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 uh, what we cra what we crazy people who study arts and stuff like that call aura. You don't get the aura that why did I use that? You don't get the aura of being in the actual presence of the piece of the performance. You're that kind of crap. Um, but it's 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 never as amazing. But in it is like it is amazing when you consider that, like, um, for about fifteen euro, I'm able to go. Oh my god, go Blackula! Holy crap! It is amazing when you consider that um, that for fifteen euro I can go and watch a New York Met production. Like, which, I don't know how much you'd have to pay in the States, like, if you were in New York to go and watch it, probably like a couple of hundred dollars or something, like a hundred dollars, I don't know. Um, okay, why are we here? Who are you? Um, so I can go and see that grade of production, that really high standard of production, for so little, and it's just a great opportunity to be able to have. Oh, fuck you, Magnemite. What am I gonna do now? That's enough Deborah. Cause um she can use rock smash. Oh shit, are you gonna use Zap Cannon? Well fuck that. I'm gonna try and kill you before you get the chance. Um no, no such luck. Zap cannon? No Why would you use lock on and then Thunder Wave? That's stupid, Magnemite. Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom. Um, the, so yeah, to be able to see that standard of production for so little here in Ireland is amazing because um, we, we don't ha here in Ireland, we don't have those. We don't get that high standard of performance in opera here. I mean, people put effort into it, but it just doesn't happen. We don't have that tradition here. They're not going to weigh really too much. Um, so we just don't get that high standard of, of, of opera here, so it's great to be able to see really high standard opera in your cinema for so little money, it's just amazing. So like last year I went to two of them, I was supposed to go to three, but I went to two of them because that's what I was interested in seeing. I went to um, I went to Siegfried by Wagner, which is the third opera in um, in the Ring Cycle, and I went to third? Yeah, that's Rheingold, and then Die Valkyra, and then Siegfried, and then Götterdämmerung. Okay, so I went to Siegfried, and that was in, I can't remember when, and I also went to, um, what else did I go to? Oh, I went to Rodelinda then just before Christmas, which is a Handel opera, which is, uh, which was really good. I re like, both of those productions were fantastic. I loved them. I enjoy every minute of them. So they were really fun. Um, and then in February, was it February? In February, I was, in February, I was supposed to go to, um, Götterdämmerung, which is the fourth opera in Wagner's Ring Cycle. Um, um, I was supposed to go to that, but on the day that it was on, I had already promised, um, Kevin that I would do the stream. Remember, that was the day that, that the two of us streamed? Um, that we did a stream, so I wasn't able to go because I'd already made that commitment to do that, so it was just like, oh well. Um, so I didn't go. Anyway, I wasn't particularly in the form for going to the cinema and sitting down for five hours, four or five hours, do you know? Um, I just I just wasn't really in the form, so. But I can transmit the strongest signal as I need from here. Not if we punch you in the face, you can. The Team Rocket boss has locked himself in, but the director can open it. He's up on the fifth floor. Please save him. Okay, so we have to save the director. Um, so yeah. This year, I can't remember. I did look up what was going to be on this year, what they were going to be streaming. And there were, as far as I remember, a good few interesting ones. I do know that handles um, Giulio Cesare in Egito. I don't know. I don't speak Italian. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I do know that, which basically Ju it translates as Julius Caesar in Egypt. It practically sounds the exact same. 
I know that that's coming, so I'll probably definitely go- Probably definitely. I'll, I'll most definitely be going to that, just because it'll be- I, I really like Handel, and I like Handel's operas, so... Um, I'll most definitely go to that and see what it's like. I can- Oh! Parsifal is coming. Wagner's Parsifal, so I'll be going to that def most definitely. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Um, so yeah. But yeah, Richard Strauss's Capriccio, definitely. Go look it up. It's a brilliant opera. I wonder, I don't know if there'd be like a full production online, because, um, that's in relatively new work. So, well, not relatively new, it was made in the 40s, but like a lot of them, like a lot of productions get put online and then they get taken down because, like, whatever particular company puts them on or has the rights to them so they don't want them up on the internet because they won't sell the DVDs of them, do you know that kind of way? So I don't know whether that'll be up there, do you know? Do you know what? I'm perceiving that this is going to be two videos because we're up to 26 minutes now and I might just do what I did last week or the week before and do record the whole thing and then split it in two and put it up on Saturday and Sunday. You better know as you the director, that won't be possible because I'm going to beat you. Don't count on a body. So yeah, things are pretty interesting enough at the moment. Um, what else is going on? I have my German oral on either, um, I have my German oral exam on either Tuesday or Wednesday. They're actually supposed to be emailing me about that today to let me know what day it's on. It'll be either Tuesday or Wednesday. So I have that on either Tuesday or Wednesday, and then on Thursday, I'm doing my first, um, exam that I'm reading for, so I'm reading an Irish exam, um, so I'm doing that, and then, uh, after that there are just, like, all those exams are coming up and stuff like that, so after that there's not really much happening. It's 16-bit summer, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, and today I actually put up the first part of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which seems to be getting a great reception so far from the couple of comments that I saw. Um, so I'd just like to thank you guys for that. That is an eight-part LP at the, for the whole for the main game or whatever. Um, so that is an eight-part LP. I would like to record a part nine because what I'd like to do is like to get someone out here, maybe like Colum or Kevin or someone like that, and like record a video of us doing the two-player stuff because I think that would be fun and it'd be a fun way to end off the LP, you know. Um, so I'd like to do that. Blackula grew to level 27! Um, when's he going to learn wing attack? Probably at like level 30 or 31 or something. What are we going to do? Um, let's send out Debra! I have to say it like that, it's so fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's 16-bit summer. If you want to get involved, there's a video that you can look up. Um, where on Why did I use that? There's a video that you can look up to get the intro and to find out all about it and stuff like that. Um, also, what, what, oh yeah, there were those two videos I put up during the week. One of them was Yoshi the Big Fat Jerk, which is the song, you know, um, Yoshi the Big Fat Jerk, the Big Fat Jerk is Yoshi, Yoshi the Big Fat Jerk, the Big Fat Stupid Jerk. So yeah, there, there's that song, which, um, which I implore you guys, if you really want to, and it would make me delighted, I'd love if you guys could like post a video response of your own personal rendition of Yoshi the Big Fat Jerk, um, and post it as a response to that video, because that would just be hilarious, and um, I just think it'd be funny. So there was that video. So I and like Awesome Sauce has already posted one response, and it was brilliant. He did like this acapella doo-woppy kind of one where he's like, da 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 Yoshi, big fat jerk, and he's also an asshole or something like that. And um, Super Paper Nest did um did his own rendition, which was like this kind of like smooth like this lounge lizard kind of um jazz waltz kind of version. It was crazy. Um, so that was really fun. So yeah, I, I've got two video responses so far for it, um, so I'd really like to see, like, more of them. Um, it would just make my day, you know. The other video that I put up was the Fresh Prince of the Magitech Research Facility, which was just ridiculous. Like, basically what happened was, I was looking at these, like, Fre Jodo, Jodo's Fresh Prince of Bel-Air mashups, where they layer Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's theme tune 
over, like, video game music, and for some reason, almost all of them are Sonic the Hedgehog music, so apparently, people who like Sonic the Hedgehog also like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, maybe they go together, I don't know. Um, I know I liked both of them when I was, like, small, so I used to watch the two, I used to watch the Fresh Prince and play Sonic back, back in the day, you know, um, and loved, and loved them both. 